Welcome to Dr. Voip Training. This brief training segment is from the Dr. Voip Shortel 8 Administration video series. The complete 15 hours of training is available online or on DVD at drvoip.com. Let's meet our coach, Peter Buswell. Known throughout the telecom industry as Dr. Voip, Peter brings a wealth of experience to his training sessions. He has worked in telecom since 1970. He's worked exclusively in VoIP since 1998. He's a VoIP entrepreneur with three venture capital-backed businesses. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Information Technology Management, plus certifications from some of America's leading communications companies. Let's join one of Peter's training sessions now in progress. SIP trunks work pretty much the same way as adding a trunk to any other trunk group. If we go back to switches, we have a switch here called Martin, and you will recall that we did, in fact, um, set this switch up with some number uh, of um, facilities from the trunk group defined as mm, looks like 918100 that trunk group what I'm trying to do here is find the switch in which we probably put it over here on Gretsch I'm guessing yes uh, no. on Gretsch we apparently have enabled a hundred uh, SIP proxies um, we have a total of uh, 20 IP phones, zero SIP trunks. Um, so that isn't where our SIP trunks are. Where are they? So let's take a look here at Guild. And yeah, it looks like uh, on the bigger switch here, we did in fact uh, set up <coughs> five SIP trunks. Actually, we've got 10 SIP trunks. Keep in mind um, that these represent licenses. So on this particular um, 120.24, I can have 120 IP phones, 24 analog lines, or some combination thereof. And what we've done here is to enable uh, certain facilities on the system. Again, we've um, put uh, an analog trunk on port 8 and we've enabled IP phones but look here and you'll see that we have some SIP trunks so if we go back to our trunk group discussion and go to individual trunks you'll see that you know I've named it SIP tie line uh, but I have to in fact put some trunks into the trunk group named tie line to Hollywood and we do that just like we do anything else. Let's uh, add a new trunk at site, Carlsbad in trunk group, tie line to Hollywood. And it will, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll give it an aim. You know, it'll ask for the SIP uh, um, trunk information. And uh, we are giving the trunk the IP address of 192.168.12.251, which happens to be um, the IP address of a switch uh, in the other site. So uh, if I quickly bring that guy up here in another window, Log into the other site. Switches, uh, blah, 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 blah. You'll see here that uh, 192, 168, a switch called Central Casting. It has some SIP trunks established on it. So um, SIP trunk is down here on port eight of that system. So going back, um, to the place that we added this trunk, we're telling the SIP registration to be accomplished 
over here. At any rate, adding trunks or circuits or lines is something that we do on an individual basis to facilitate populating our trunk groups uh, with facilities that can be made available to users. So on the uh, last part of uh, the trunk group trunks and individual trunks, trunk groups is really the focal point here.